find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Did you hear about that new band? Their name is 1023 Megabytes. They haven't got a gig yet. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the Awesome Cast 257. I'm Mike Sorg in Pittsburgh, PA at Sorgatron on the Toyers. Hey, big thanks to Rob Powers of the Net Results, uh, the IT company that helps us out at uh, Seclair every Monday. Ran into him, and he shared with me a little bit of IT humor, and I just thought I'd uh, pass that along. This is the venue for that kind of thing, and I really hope that uh, DJ Lunchbox doesn't listen because he hates those kinds of jokes. <laughs> 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 but anyways, we got a, a wide, wide assortment. Everybody is digital this week. That means I can do a shot like this if you're on video. So we're very Brady Bunch today. Everybody joining us online <laughs> in <a> various... <laughs> it's a it's a story of a cast named Awesome. There you go. Awesome. So first with us uh, from Studio B, currently still under renovations. They didn't complete. The hot tub is not installed yet. It's John Chachilla <laughs> from a whole borough away in uh, Dormont, PA, at Chilla on the Twitters. How you doing this week? Pretty good. How are you doing? And my infinity pool. The infinity pool on the Juliet balcony. Not mm, installed yet either. There you go. There you go. That's the wish list right there. Also with us, also in Studio C, uh, what are you up in Newcastle, right? Yes, I'm up all the way up north. Yes. Oh, shoot. The cat found the toy that makes the cricket noise. <laughs> 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 that mystery noise, yes. You know, where the... I, I should not be on a tech show. Why do you even allow me to come on this show? Once again, for those, you're, you're back to your one of your amazing uh, uh, setup here. You have an iPhone propped yes. up. <laughs> it's propped on my cat's pedestal that she uses to look out the window on, what, four books in a notebook and I have my checkbook in front. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, you should not allow me to be on a show about technology. Amazing. Amazing. Hey, it makes it work, right? Um, <laughs> and, and also back with us, our friend in, in the in the paper media. He's your Uncle Crappy. He's the, he's a beer guy. He's the beer guy. He is a, uh, Mike a Pound. Guy. This week, I'm a, I'm a hippie music guy. There you go. There you go. Um, it's gonna, like, when these two things to cross, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy. So this Fantastic. Fantastic. And we're speaking of hippie, hippie, mu hippie music guy, we're going to talk about that a little bit too. Uh, and, and hopefully, hey, well, you, are you officially, you've been filming a lot. I haven't caught up with anything, but is, is the beer guy on, on Post Gazette out? Uh, yeah. it's, it's called Beer Me. Beer Me. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can find it at, uh, uh, we're just going to go ahead and say we're going to find it at uh, uh, post gazette.com slash beer me. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been going for uh, not quite. I don't know how many episodes I've done. Um, working on setting up another one at a, a, a one of our breweries in Millville. Uh, that would be the next show that comes out next week. But but it's been very very cool. Um, it's gotten a, a very nice reception, and I'm I'm happy to continue to be able to talk about beer on video. So that's that awesome. Works. That's awesome. It's the dream gig, right? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I'll try to pull up some video of that for uh, before we get out of here. Uh, so anyways, this is the Awesome Cast. We like to talk tech, get geeky, and have a lot of fun here at AwesomeCast.net. We also have another show, which I think we're going to actually have another episode pop up of the Awesome Chat over there. Uh, we got uh, something very, very fun and video game based uh, this week, but you can check out all the past episodes of this and that there. Uh, you can also find links to subscribe to us on uh, iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio uh, uh, for this and the other show. Please rate us, especially on iTunes. Uh, it helps a lot for other people to find the show, and even even if you're not uh, uh, clicking on the Amazon links or, or drop it in the Patreon, just doing that to help people discover us is a huge, huge help. Uh, even if you don't regularly have us on iTunes, if you have it on your computer, I think most of you probably do out there, uh, please just drop in. Just click uh, click some uh, star rating, write a review, whatever the case may be. We don't have any right now, and I think that's really been detrimental to us uh, uh, kind of getting out there a bit more. But I know you guys are listening. You keep telling me on the Twitters and the emails. I th thank you. It's been coming up a conversation. It's been it's been fantastic. Uh, also, you can check out uh, – you can actually contact us on social media, uh, at AwesomeCast, Facebook, Google+. We have a Facebook group you can drop in and comment on. Uh, AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com if you want to drop an email as well. And you can join us live every Tuesday at 6.30. 30 p.m. Eastern at AwesomeCast. I'm sorry, live.awesomecast.com. 
podcast.net. And uh, like I, I mentioned real quick, the Patreon, it's a way that you guys, uh, you know, if you're not uh, checking out some of the stuff that we have linked over there, if you're not able to get in town and check out some Slice on Broadway and supporting them who support us, uh, you can go to the patreon.com slash awesomecast. And we have our first patron. So big Woo! thanks, big thanks, big five bucks from uh, uh, per episode for Thistle Sea Business Development up in Cranberry Township, PA. Awesome. Going to give you a plug for that, a high plug for five dollars worth of a plug right there. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, uh, supporting the show. I hope you guys are enjoying it up there, and I uh, hope you continue to. So let's get into the awesome things of the week. Uh, let's first uh, roll over to Chilla. What do you got, I buddy? Get to go first. Yeah, sure. You're because you're the next Wait. one on the switcher. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, mine is actually it's called SaveFrom.net. Okay. Um, and what SaveFrom.net does is it, it lets you take pretty much any link that contains a video and it lets you download it locally right on your machine from anywhere from. YouTube.com, Dailymotion, uh, Vimeo, pretty much anything you want to take video off a rip and rip it off of a website, um, they allow you to do that. I personally like this. Uh, Facebook, it'll allow you to rip Facebook video, um, Twitch, whatnot. I like this because, and I think we've talked about this before on the show, um, I'm not necessarily saying I want to steal a bunch of video. What mm -hmm. I do want to do is be able to take video with me on my train ride to work, watch it, and then delete it. Um, I hit probably two to th I hit two to three major stints where I don't have connectivity, um, and I am trying to watch more video than I am audio um, when I can. Um, and this allows me to do just that. Um, obviously, it can be used for nefarious purposes, too, if you want to download massive amounts of video off of YouTube and then take it and do whatever you want with it. Um, what I'm saying is is this, uh, this uh, to me, allows an offline experience when, when you may not have, be able to be online. Um, the cool thing that I, I really liked about uh, SaveFrom.net is they also have a section for webmasters where they've created a button that you can customize and, and set um, color on. You can set the font on it. Um, and then it generates a, a bunch of JavaScript um, for your button. And then you put that on your video and it allows anyone to then download it. So if you wanted people to be able to take your video and download it and you wanted to promote that offline experience, mm -hmm. um, this allows you to do that. So I thought this was a pretty cool little little website, little utility, another tool for the toolkit. Um, and, and I really, I, I actually use this quite often now. That's, it's it's going to be a, a tool for my toolkit because <laughs> seriously, in my line of business, if, if we want video that someone else has shot, we have to figure out how to get it. Right. right. Um, right. And now, man, if we get permission, we, we have this and we go. And that's that's pretty cool. Right. I have actually that's been be helpful. I've been using a um, a, a plugin for Firefox. It's just like a Flash video mm -hmm. download or something. But that, that this is, I like that you have that ability. Like I like this idea that I don't have to set up a whole other thing for people to download the shows. I can just use their the YouTube I'm already using for this. Yeah. Although mm -hmm. I do wonder, does that count? <laughs> do I get a view at least? Right. Uh, to, 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 but still, I, I kind of just want people to, to, to experience it, right? Uh, right? First and foremost, if I'm getting stats or not. Uh, but yeah, that that I, I'm I'm earmarking this to maybe integrate into the site. Maybe we'll do. Well, the, the reason I too I, I like it as well versus having a plugin for your browser. Obviously, then it's browser. This is browser agnostic. It works pretty much on anything. Right. And I don't have to load someone's plugin to my browser that's sitting there doing something that I may not know it's doing or that it's running all the time or whatnot. So right. I've used programs like R Ari, Ari, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, that's actually an app on your machine. Same thing. I, I, I'm not sure I want someone's application sitting there running all the time just so I can download a video occasionally. To me, this is a, a better, safer way to do it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that, I, I'm earmarking it for, for all kinds of stuff. Because, yeah, same thing, uh, uh, Mike. I, I'm, I'm grabbing footage. Sometimes it's easier for me just to like, use that plugin to grab footage off of YouTube mm -hmm. of something mm -hmm. I did to use somewhere else. Like, uh, yeah. I found myself uh, uh, on the Sawtooth Willie. He's been calling back the video, so I'm putting a little corner, hey, check out this episode kind of thing. And sure. I just I just completely steal it off of myself <laughs> <laughs> instead of, like, going and finding the assets, right? Um, it, it works fine, right? So... 
uh, and even uh, unsung when we did that kind of thing. We would always have to throw, you know, pull a B roll off of all the nonprofits to put into the show. So uh, very, very handy. Or if uh, you have a video site that doesn't have uh, Chromecast support, is what I've been using it for recently. Oh, right. And yeah. and uh, I use vi the video stream uh, um, um, extension to bring that in. Awesome. So that's uh, is it en.savefrom.net or I guess it's just the English version. It's just the English version. When I when I went there, it's you can just type in savefrom.net and it takes you to your your localized language. Awesome. Yeah. Go check it out. Thanks, Chilla. Mm -hmm. Dutters, you're the next one on the switcher in the lineup. Hi, hey. I'm Dutters. <laughs> um, I have uh, Jewel Box. Um, it's at currently Kickstarter. They're $79,000, which is pretty fantastic. Nice. Uh, what they are are friendship bracelets that teach girls to code. They're these little doodad bracelets, and it's a little uh, flower design, it looks like, on it. And um, whenever you get close to another um, a friend that has one, you can program it to light up, and you can send messages back and forth. It'll vibrate. Um, you could, it's essentially a secret code. You could set up between friends. But what I really think is cool, because you know everything about drones, um, you can go in and code this however you want and uh, to get notifications for certain things, weather updates, notify your parents, and fly a drone. If you look on the website, it is fly a drone. Nice. So, so I could use this guy. to it's, um, I think it's all Bluetooth. Looks like how it's um, sending things. It's got a little USB, and um, but it's a fun way for they're, – they're touting it as um, a way for girls to code. And uh, they're also from the group that did – where did it go? Oh, no. Uh, da, 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 something hack with your daughters. Where'd it go? I just lost it on the page. Oh, um, take your daughter to hack a day long bi coastal event that uh, lets parents and daughters and sons create wearable projects using um, different open uh, source coding. So they also are sponsors of that. So it's just a neat way to, you know, expose kids to coding and um, fun. Like I said, if you can fly a drone with one of these bracelets, I'm totally in. I want one. <laughs> this really does this does, does kind of also lend to uh what we what we discussed before about uh you know kind of uh, creating wearables that are kind of uh more uh that fit in like as jewelry mm -hmm. like we talked about the mm -hmm. leaf a few weeks ago that was really kind of targeted at women uh, uh very specifically uh so so what do you, what do you think about i don't know if you saw our leaf uh discussion from a couple of weeks ago in this what do you think about like that kind of move to kind of fit in a little more and be a more okay visual for, for, for especially women to wear. I, I like it. I think it's, I mean, it's, I, I would not, and people, I, I don't like when people were like, Oh, um, I don't want things too girly because that means that uh, I'm show you know, you can't, it, you kind of walk this fine line of being a girl and being too girly. Like the people look down on being too girly, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Everybody is entitled to be who they want. And people really like the customized jewelry. They like to blend in, uh, especially the wearables. What a lot of people don't like Fitbits because it's like you have a chunky bracelet on your wrist and some people don't mind. I mean, I wore one for a while, but um, I think just the way it's becoming more customized and you're seeing more wearables working into the wardrobes now and, and being, much better looking. I, I think it's it's a great new target market, and you know what? If it's what people want, sell it. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, oh, wait, 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 go check that out. Yeah, look that up on uh, Kickstarter. Uh, how how much do they have left? Uh, no, I think they were where to go. They're Ooh. over. They're they're they had thirty thousand. Yeah. They were in the seventy thousands, and they have twenty three days to go. Yep. So they're going to hit about eighty thousand here in. Wow. Any day now. Good, good. I mean, it, it <laughs> shows there's a hell of a market for these kinds of things. And oh, I, I love, I love the whole expo exposing uh, kids to coding so young. I'm so jealous. Mm -hmm. It's not fair. <laughs> Why didn't we have this kind of stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly you know i, I mean I, I remember all we had was like a c plus class as an option right and it, it just wasn't attractive like even mm -hmm. if you were really into like kind of into coding right mm -hmm. so um great uh uncle crappy i found your i found your website by the way um okay. so uh we can show that off here a little bit uh Please. so, okay. so there's, okay. there's a little bit of beer of me here's a little bit of uh him hanging out look at that great picture of him with the beer over there Look at that! Look at that! That that steps the stair I shot. Think, I should probably redo that because that was shot in the middle of winter and the sweater and all of those things. Yeah, you got full on beard. <laughs> you got very beard going on right there. 
So uh, yeah, full, that's that's another cue. Another cue <laughs> that it's wintertime. Got the full beard. Awesome. So what is your awesome thing of the week? Um, uh, as uh, because I am the uh, the printer, the little guy. My my awesome thing of the week is a book. Oh. <laughs> Um, and, and, and we're going to talk about this stuff at some point during the show. Um, the, the context is the, uh, the Grateful Dead held their, their final uh, shows, what were advertised to be their final shows, uh, not last weekend, but the weekend before, Fourth of July weekend. And um, uh, Mike actually came across a, a Wired story about some of the, uh, the, the tech innovations that had sprung from uh, the Grateful Dead's past, from uh, the, the, uh, the hippie bands that I, that I listened to a little bit. Um, and this... I'll, I'll explain this further when we get to that point in the show, but um, uh, this that, that book is, is an excellent roundup. If, if you are into rock and roll, if you are into tech, uh, those or you know some convergence of that, you will enjoy this. Um, it, it's also an excellent history of the band too, but it takes you through all, all the innovations in great detail uh, that, 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 that sprung from the band's 50 year history. So it's a cool thing. Um, I would recommend it highly, and, uh, and we're going to talk more about it at some point today. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, we'll get to that right after the break. Mm-hmm. Uh, but first, uh, we do have an uh, uh, app of the week from uh, Dutters. Hi. Hi. Okay, so we're always talking about Uber and, and what it does for grown-ups. But now there is Hop, Skip, Drive, which is just in L.A. right now. But um, it is an Uber for kids. Essentially, they screen... Ah these adults who drive these kids like if you can't take your kids to a certain practice or pick them up uh you can use this app and find yourself a ride for your kid and uh they've raised uh 3.9 million in seed funding for this and it, it allows you to monitor where your child's at like you can track them on your phone with the gps mm-hmm. and you also i think there was a talk of a camera so you could actually see them in the car yeah, but um, it goes anything from parents for like a twenty dollar ride or a twelve dollar ride. So it's um, like it's like a babysitter kind of setup, but for soccer mom drivers, right? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It's it's it's. You know, I mean, if you look at it, if your kid is done with practice at five thirty and you work, you leave work at five o'clock downtown. I mean, there's not much you can do a lot of times, especially with traffic in our city. And I'm sure LA, it's a million times worse out mm-hmm. that way. Mm-hmm. And, um, but just, you know, maybe it's, it's worth it for you to spend 12 bucks to make sure your kid gets back and forth to practice because you don't have to leave work an hour early or something. It, I mean, it, it's, it's a great idea. And, and they go through some rigorous like, background checks, fingerprinted. I mean, there's a, the whole nine, uh, to making sure that these people are okay. But I actually think it's a pretty cool service because mm-hmm. <laughs> it's from the sound of my friends with kids there, you know, who's playing basketball who's you know into soccer who's uh band practice and trying to get everywhere you know 15 different places you almost need another set of hands in another car it's sanity well it's interesting because it says five plus child five plus years of child care experience i wonder what the does that just mean you need a, your own kid that's five or above <laughs> or do you need some kind of extra so like professional child care right probably i would imagine you know, they would do some sort of interviews with uh, families you maybe you've worked with as a nanny or babysitting, I, mm-hmm. I'm guessing, or maybe if you worked with a, um, a, a, a public facility. Hmm. But they, I like the, I want, and do they, do they do like, I'm trying to scroll, it'd be interesting, mm-hmm. do they do like round trip? Because what happens if you get one of these things to get your kid there and then they can't get home? Yeah, it looks like you can schedule it as round trips. Oh, that's right, cool. Right, right. Like, like the one thing I'm reading here is talking about, uh, you know, well, kids got ballet this Wednesday at four. Kids got karate on Tuesday at three. Use your dashboard to set up your kids' rides. So, I mean, I think you, you, you connect the dots on that well in advance. And they're saying, you know, you have to have everything scheduled 24 hours. It's not Uber where you're just like, I'm down on the north side drinking. I need an Uber, you know, and you hit the button, right? <laughs> um, well, ooh, what, what if I am down on the south side drinking and I'm like, someone has to get the kids. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Then you're just like, well, you're already at that point. You're not, as a parent, you're probably not already vetting everything. So you just ordered an Uber driver for them, anyways. So, yeah. I need you to go get my kids. I mean, you already paid for it. So why not, right? Mm-hmm. So, all right. Uh, awesome. Go check that hopskipdrive.com. What, you say they're just in LA or? They're right in LA right now, but the, with that $3.9 million, I expect them Oof. to start. <laughs> really spreading out pretty darn quickly oh, i'm sure they'll be in san francisco next and uh you know how it goes uh, uh, uh seattle for instance 
uh no that's that's awesome that's awesome so uh completely uberizes uh uh that whole deal all right uh we do have from the chat room uh alex Carr is our speaking of california he's out there uh, actually, near-ish LA, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, if, uh, but he's saying uh, his awesome thing of the week is whatever I'm, he's going to buy on Amazon Prime today for Prime Day. And I know we're going to talk about that here in a moment, of course. Uh, and uh, I think that's all I have at the moment. So, hey, we want to talk some Grateful Dead with uh, with uh, Uncle Crappy. But first, uh, let's talk about, uh, first you got to kick back. You got to have some pizza. Enjoy your podcast oh, oh, with yeah. us. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I mean, right? Yeah, you, 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 you know, crappy, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a Absolutely. beer. You have a beer. Are you, you, you're cracking something open there, right? What, what do you got? What are you drinking tonight for the beer uh, uh, fanatics well, outside? Out uh, uh, this is my second one. This is from an Ithaca beer company uh, in upstate New York. Um, it's called Cruiser. It is a Berliner Weiss. It's a little tart, tart. Uh, it is perfect um, for a, a summertime uh, consumption. Or even when uh, I'm upstairs in our drafty old house and it's a little stuffy up here. So that, that works pretty well. Awesome, awesome. But with that beer, you can, because I think there's still BYOB, our friends down there over at Slice on Broadway. You can check them out so. sliceonbroadway.com. They actually have some on hand as well, at least in the, in the uh, Beachview location here, right along the tracks in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. Uh, they got some great stuff down there, uh, some great high quality pizza. They got two locations, like I said, right here in Beachview as well as in downtown uh, Main Street in Carnegie, PA. If you can find your way around the construction to get to that, you will be rewarded by great pizza. Uh, so thank Thank you to them and supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with some perfect pepperoni pizza. And uh, please follow them, PGH underscore Slice, on the Twitter, as well as Slice on Broadway on the Instagram and Facebook. And thank them for supporting the awesome cast for well over a year. Thank you. So, uh, and also with that, let's take a quick look at uh, last week around Sorg these parts, these here parts in Sorgatron Media. I've given up on Crossy Road. I don't care anymore. Oh, oh, that's sad and disheartening. But you can, I mean, you can only cross so many roads, Bobby. It, it, it's retrofitted with giant paintball guns, like Gatling paintball guns. And, uh, and it looks freaking serious. It actually takes two people to op operate. There's actually an operator and a gunner in this thing. It's ridiculous. So, and there's some shots there of it just destroying cars with paintballs. Wow. Amazing. He gave me one of the most memorable moments I'll ever have in my entire career. No matter what I've done before or what I will do. Uh, that night, Chuck handed me the IWC title, the old title, the custom-made International Wrestling Cartel heavyweight title. And, I'm, and as I'm talking to you right now, I'm looking at it. I have it in a glass case on my wall. It's not a lot of times in independent wrestling that you get to keep something that you worked very hard for, okay? Like I can't snarky. say don't be, don't be, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't, be a, snarky, yeah. don't be a no smart ass. Moments. Don't be like, a don't be a smart ass. Don't be yeah, that's smart ass. Sorg, did you just come up with that? Yeah, I don't think I've heard of that. Because that's mother awesome. Chachi Plays for Kids is coming back again. The 24-hour Gameathon for Youth Arts Programs in Pittsburgh. August 7th and 8th at the Toonsium or join us live chachiplays.com find out how you can make a difference too and donate today chachiplays.com up down down left right left right BA BA start All right, check out all those shows. Great stuff last week. Great interviews if you're into pro wrestling, wrestlingmayhemshow.com, insertcoinbegin.com for the video games. Good, good stuff all across the network and, 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 and more coming up this week as well. So uh, let's first, again, we wanted Mike on here because I saw this article. I, I honestly skimmed it. It seemed pretty cool, but I knew you were the man for this one. Uh, so there was a Wired article that came across my email. Call them hippies, but the Grateful Dead were pioneers, or tech pioneers, actually. Uh, so, you know, and, and they, they go back a bit. <laughs> a little bit. They go bit. back a bit. Uh, this was, the, the reason they, were play, they played the shows in Chicago Fourth of July weekend was this, uh, this would be their 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and several members of the band, including Jerry Garcia, who, who died in 1995, actually had been playing together longer than that. So, um, but, but as a band, you know, that 1965 is when they started. So they had a lot of time together. 
Um, they had this, uh, they had this uh, spirit of experimentation that's obviously reflected in the music, um, but it was reflected in the the, uh, the business and, and kind of technical side of everything they did as well. Um, it, starting with like sound system, uh, uh, going into uh, letting audience um, uh, audiences tape their shows, uh, uh, this whole the idea of a social network kind of built up around this band. Um, very, very early on. And that's, and not all the stuff is sort of covered a little bit in this weird story. Um, I, I, so I, I don't know if there's a, anything that, that you want me just to go because I can, I can do that. Um, please go you for it. You're, you're things. the, you're the fan. I want to interpret this. I, I'm re- I mean, I'm really fascinated well, by, I okay. mean, I mean, I, 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 you know, I'm the kind of guy that, that I loved, uh, catch and haul fire, for instance, for like the old school, <laughs> like what was technology? Like what was the cutting edge there in the mid eighties, right? Or early eighties, I guess. So, so like for these guys, what was cutting edge? You know, you mentioned a couple of them, but, but re- what really stuck out as, well, as well, like when, when they, when they started performing in 19, 1960- 60s mm-hmm. um nobody paid attention to sound at all there was a house pa system and you plugged into that and you might you know you might have some monitors on stage and some and small things so you can sort of, sort of hear what you're doing but that that was not um that was not a priority oh so they like had, so pretty much like an indie wrestling show yeah kind of yeah, <laughs> yeah. um <laughs> I don't know if uh, indie wrestling shows uh, had uh, wealthy patrons who uh, earned their money selling LSD all, all up and down the West uh, Coast. That I don't was, know about in Pittsburgh, but I'm sure somewhere there is. Uh, that was that was the case for the Grateful Dead. There's a, a guy named Stanley Owsley, uh, nicknamed as Bear. Um, he befriended the band. He had a lot of money because uh, he made uh, started making LSD when it was still legal, actually. Um, and he was he was always bothered by the sound quality, so. Uh, there were several kind of things where they were making their own gear and, and expanding a little bit uh, until 1972 and 73. They came up with this thing called the Wall of Sound, and I don't know if you have a if you have a picture of this anywhere, um, like um, that. If, if you Google the Wall of Sound, you'll you'll come up with one pretty quick. Um, it was this massive thing. This is a it, it required a, a 40 foot semi trailer. It required a full wow. like a day to set up. Um, and, it, and eventually they stopped using it because it was it was so expensive to haul around. <laughs> but the sound was so clean w- and so loud um, uh, that it was it, it, it's it, it's really never been duplicated. One of the things that they had to do, and this is pointed out in the wire story, uh, they, they because they, they placed all the speakers behind the musicians. There were no monitors in front, um, so you, each musician kind of had their own stack of speakers. Uh, and and to, to one of the things that they had to do so they wouldn't get feedback from vocals is they, they developed these kind of two-pronged uh, microphones that were, were, that were noise-canceling. Um, and that technology, uh, eventually that technology was, was uh, sold to NASA. Um, so, wow. you know, there, there, are these, there are these jumps like this. Um, I, I mentioned the social network, uh, the well in the Bay Area. That sprung up largely. Uh, and it was, you know, it's, it's a message board. Um, and this was uh, late 60s, early 70s. That sprung up. So people could say, "Hey, I have tapes of this show. Here is the here's the set list from the from the uh, the show they just played." And this this kind of obsessive disc, uh, discussions sprung up, um, and and that's that was you know it, it's it's a really early form of a of a social network and social media. Um, the, the the idea of show recordings of fans were able to do that, and then and we've traded tapes um, now. Um, uh, a bit torrent uh, developed in part because we wanted an easier way to, to trade uh, to trade uh, recordings of these shows. Um, and now uh, the, the bands are kind of in, involved with this as well. Um, like they're when I have this, I will show you this. This is a ticket from an evening in Mo a couple of years ago. Uh, the band is called Mo. They're a hippie band from uh, from upstate New York. You buy that ticket. You also buy one of these if you want. And what this does is uh, about to 10 minutes after the show is over, you walk up to the merch booth and you grab this. And it's a thumb drive. And the show that you just heard, along with some pictures and, and whatever other stuff the band wants to put on there, is on this drive. And boom, you take this home mm-hmm. um, and you, you know, you're listening to it at the same time. Uh, this, I will, this is a ticket stub from Fish. This ticket stub, we have the, uh, the, the code on the, uh, the barcode here. Uh, for the for the, the price you pay for the show, uh, you're able. I, and I bring a laptop with me when we go see them. 
Um, because that night, by the time when we're back in the hotel room, if we're traveling, uh, we are able to download a copy of that show. Wow. Um, Lincoln Park, I've heard Lincoln Park did that too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and that's and this is stuff. Um, it, 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 it's not all a, a, a it's straight line uh, developed because of what the Grateful Dead did, uh, but there but there's there is this influence. Um, it, uh, we now there's a thing if you if you uh, 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 search uh, hashtag Couch Tour, you will find people discussing on Twitter. You know if, if Fish is out or uh, Widespread Panic is out. They were just here in Pittsburgh a few weeks ago. Um, a, a number a number of bands like that. Uh, people stream them. Um, they they have uh, these are all table friendly bands, but people will set up mics, um, uh, pretty elaborate setups, uh, and and you can sit in your house and listen to audio feeds, and sometimes in some occasions listen to video feeds or watch video feeds mm-hmm. uh, that that people are just doing from the uh, from from out in the audience. So is this? Uh, I mean, I mean, obviously, like you know, we've 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 had discussions, and I think you've been on here talking about as well with Periscope cool. and Meerkat, what that's yeah. done for for the news industry. Mm-hmm. Or going to do, or will do. Uh, well, who knows what, at what point we are with that kind of evolution? Uh, do you see that certainly being uh, <laughs> kind of adopted into what, what, what you're there, already seeing there? There, there were people who periscoped, um, the, and I, I found streams like that uh, during the, the, the Fourth of July weekend for the for the dead shows in Chicago. Yeah, um, it's for for those purposes, it's still a little rough. Yeah, uh, oh, of course. Yeah, I don't. I, you know, you can you can have a. If you can sneak in the kind of a makeshift tripod, you know the video quality is going to be a little bit better. Um, but but and and some people some people do some people pull off really really nice looking video streams. Um, uh, audio is obviously more common, and, and in some cases the audio uh, the audio could be pretty good. Um, and then you know these the, the, the Grateful Dead shows from Chicago were were all streamed by the band, so I can I can watch that, but. Um, so the, and the band head does not have; they will have official releases that, that come out in a few weeks. Um, but I already have audience copies uh, that fans recorded legally, right, you know, with the, with the band's blessing, of uh, of all three Chicago shows plus the two they did out in California the weekend before. Um, and I was able; you know, those were all available within a couple of days of, uh, of that run being over. So, um, so I, that so that's and that's all. You know, spit to it, boom! I have them. Uh, they're on, they're on my iPod, and I'm, I'm, I've been listening to them obsessively since. Awesome! It's a great article. It's really good to kind of look at. It. I mean, you got to kind of look at the history of this, how things developed, how did we get to this point? And I think Grateful Dead, or yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a musical fan of Grateful Dead myself, but definitely appreciate like the contributions that they've done. You know, um, and and I love watching you going nuts for them too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can talk about. This oh, stuff. Like, like 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 you know, every time I see the tweets from the Fish concert, I'm like, oh, there he goes, <laughs> there he goes. Only only one Fish show uh, this summer. Um, so if you follow me. Uh, what is it? The first Friday in August. Um, you you can mute me for that night or follow along, whichever <laughs> your preference is. But, hey, but, you but know it's coming. It's coming. I was the same this way this weekend when I was like all wrestling all weekend long. I don't oh, do. Yeah, I yeah, try so not good. to on my mainstream, but it was just me. So you know, that's is like this is what I'm doing. You know. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? <laughs> so it's nice to be not not being on the other side of the camera for once for those things. So. <laughs> I would, I would one more plug about this book. Sure. Um, and it, 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 if you're if you're a deadhead, it is it is a very very cool thing because it's it is a very thorough history of the band. And it goes all the way through uh, from '65 to '95. Nice. But if you do have an interest in technology, uh, particularly as it pertains to music, um, the, the instruments, uh, sound technology, and you even get into some of this digital stuff in 1995. Um, uh, it's it is it is definitely worth a read. So uh, nice. so be sure to check that out. Go check it out. We'll, we'll throw a link up on the uh, awesomecast.net. You guys can check it out. Perfect. We got Perfect. affiliate links so you can support the show while you're at it. So, all righty. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, let's go to Dutters. You got a couple of things. Um, what was this crossed off? Uh, what, I have no idea. <laughs> what's happening here? <laughs> well, hey, let's go local for this. Tell me about the uh, the uh, an app live in the app store developed by uh, a CMU Grab. I don't know how we we missed this. Not that I, how we missed it. It was the uh, it won the TechCrunch Disrupt New York 2015 Hackathon. Nice. Uh, won the grand prize, so it's it's a big deal. Uh, what it is, it's kind of like uh, Periscope, but um, you have a certain connection with uh, friends that you have a close circle with, like you would have your best friend, maybe your family, whatever. And um, if something, if you were in a situation where you need to send them your location in a video of what was going on, it will. 
um, I believe if you watch the video on the app, it shows them, um, it comes up as a call from witness and then, um, it says that to check your text messages and then you can actually get into it. Um, but I think they were working on whether or not it was going to be a black screen. There was, I was reading the TechCrunch article quickly and it was talking about whether they could get a black screen so they couldn't see you know, the person who, you know, the person obviously attacking you wouldn't see a, a display. Mm-hmm. So it would be like a secret um, thing, but I, I could see how they would be a little nervous about that. Um, but they're kind of working around that. Uh, but because it was going to go to a black screen when recording began, which was designed to hide the fact that you were actively recording. So that's what they wanted to do. But they were having a little trouble with in the app store as far as um, just some regulations, obviously. Right. Um, but they're trying different user interfaces to see if there's somewhere between like a fully black screen. But essentially, it does just tell you it sends a message out to those close to you and a video. So it's, it's a periscope type feed that lets them see what's going on. Um, not only was it mentioned for you know, uh, if you were in maybe a shady neighborhood or, uh, even it kind of was a big deal because of all the police things that were going on. Um, so this is kind of a real big thing, but I get the gentleman is, uh, Marina's, uh, Bernicitas. I'm going to totally butcher that name. I apologize. Um, but, uh, it's, it's in the app store now and it, it looks a fantastic app. I think as far as safety goes. Yeah. I mean, it, it, this kind of goes back to, um, Oh, why can't I remember their name? The guy, uh, Life, Life, uh, Life Shell. Life Shell. Thank you. Uh, that yeah. we're trying mm-hmm. to do the similar. Like there was was more like a reactive, uh, social. Hey, panic button, come help me, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But this is again using video. Um, and I, and I think in a very very smart way, kind of in our angle on on, on a similar situation, right? Mm-hmm. So. Um, this is yeah. I, I think it's a really cool app, and, and like I said, you can customize it to who actually gets the notifications, which is is nice. And it's not you know sending it out to, Ooh, but it's it's actually a legitimate app trying to protect people and um, make them feel safer. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it's a CMU grad. What the heck? <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, there's so much coming out of there. <laughs> there's a lot you can miss uh, uh, going on there. Yeah, so, it's not our so- fault. It's them. Stop being so talented. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's a, that, that sort of reminds me. There's a thing that I, I, I read about this. I think just like in the last few days, um, a, a similar app. It is uh, built by American Civil Liberties Union in California, and I, I wanna. I'm trying to find this. Uh, I, I don't. I think it's called Mobile Mobile Justice, something like that. I have no idea about uh, about status if it's available right now. Um, the idea is this is this is a little more politically charged than than what Kate was talking about. Um, you, you are filming, this is built to film police interactions. Um, so if, if, if you think something is going on that shouldn't be going on, you can film it. And then with one click, you can send it, it will go straight. Uh, it will be uploaded to an ACLU server, the American Civil Liberties Union. Um, so they have it, uh, and that's done instantly. So if, if, um, if, if there is a, a police officer who, who maybe says, I need to take your phone or I need to delete what you just filmed. Um, it's that the video is already gone. Uh, hmm. So obviously this is, this is kind of coming at a similar situation from a different angle, but, um, but that's, that reminded me of the, uh, of what, what this ACL youth thing does. Let's see if mm-hmm. I can find you. It, the, it is the, called, the, um, it is called uh, mobile justice. Okay. California. Okay. Okay. And it also oh. gives you the um, least in the state of California, the law enforcement, um, what you can, which, what rights you have. Mm-hmm. In regards mm-hmm. to filming something, and that's and that's important. That's 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 stuff that's good to know. Um, mm-hmm. And I do like how it says, uh, "Don't do anything the officer might perceive as a physical threat or reaching for a weapon." You know, it's like oh, common sense things too. That sometimes. Yes, and that and that was I, I, in the, the the stuff that I read about this. That was uh, that was featured prominently. Um, they, they they do want they they want to know about this stuff, but they they want uh, members of the public who are using this app to to use some common sense and be a little careful too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've sent a link to, uh, sent a link out on Twitter, or Facebook, uh, Google Plus, everything for the uh, ACLU uh, mobile okay. justice for anybody that wants to check that out. Hey, while I'm at it, I, I threw this in the it, right under uh, her CMU story. If you want to check this out, uh, one I didn't get too deep into. But speaking of uh, CMU, uh, 
Gloto, Gloto, G L O T T O, is making CMU a living lab for the Internet of Things. So uh, they're doing a uh, $500,000 uh, Google funded project led by a team of CMU tech experts, this is according to nextpittsburgh.com. By the way, if you're in the Pittsburgh area and not uh, uh, following text, uh, nextpittsburgh.com, shame on you. Uh, you there's you such really, good really stuff. Should. It, it's, it, they were at the social media day and they're just like, and I didn't realize like how much of a mission they had, but it's just like we're doing social good stories. So it's like, okay you know i just like a bunch of stuff i liked because it is just about like getting out exploring pittsburgh how great pittsburgh is and all the great technology stuff happening here which is a big story about this place so you see a lot of stories like this um so so yeah so another thing you know going on here uh, we, we shared this on the social media today if you want to get two more uh, uh, get more into it uh but uh pretty cool that they're doing a lot of internet of things stuff in there uh, uh chill is probably more up your alley uh for diving into a little bit so uh so from there I, let's 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 wind it back to some television guys uh so big story <laughs> that came out this week uh comcast has launched its own streaming service which is intriguing so it's it, it, you don't need a cable service um this is only available in certain uh, markets because they're dealing with uh the local the local television channels but basically for 15 dollars you can get all your uh local channels so all of your nbc abc whatever the case may be and hbo so basically for the price of hbo now you can just get digital streams and and uh on demand and uh, actually a, a cloud dvr i guess uh, uh along with it uh no espn no other cable channels really just local channels and hbo for some that might be enough right and i i wonder where this is available <clears throat> Like I know people that would this this would work perfectly for, except for because they are in a remote location, right? And they can't get cable to their house, but for that reason, they can't get broadband speed internet to their house either. So, streaming isn't necessarily even an option for them. <clears throat> to me, this sounds like Arrow all over again. Yes, exactly. But but, but exactly. by a bigger company that. Uh, but it's get more. Away with it. I think it's more of a sling TV sort of thing, and also this only works in. Uh, it's going to be only in areas that have Comcast. They're calling it an IP over uh, a TV IP based managed network basically what that means is it's coming over yes the internet but it, it, i think there's no difference between how this works and how um um your cable box probably yeah, works. like your cable box works like the streaming on that right because this doesn't work outside your home this doesn't work on any other internet um everything's in-house so basically you're you're getting a stripped down cable package that doesn't actually require cable as it is so but you're, but you're, it's a, you're saying it doesn't work out of my home like i can't use it on a tablet nope. or mobile device? Well, you can use you can use it on a tablet or mobile device on your home network. I'm pretty sure you're required to have a uh, yeah you you'll, you'll need Comcast <laughs> internet service to subscribe. So just like now, where you have to sign in, you can get all that in home DVR stuff on uh, like say Directv does this too. But usually it just works on the same Wi Fi as your box, or it's on that it knows it's your home internet service through comcast that's how this is going to work as well so it's not like hulu where i can walk around watching it wherever yeah I'm so, not, so so the 15 dollars <laughs> is in addition to the non-bundled comcast internet bill that's now probably going to go up mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah i'm not i don't know you this, also, seems, this seems very gimmicky to, to where comcast can say look we can let you cut the cord too it feels like they're just throwing bundles of technology against the wall to see what sticks. Yeah, it, yes. it, you can cut the cord as long as you run Ethernet from our Ethernet cord. Right, right, right. You're not really cutting the cord. You still have their cord, <laughs> and right? And you still pay us a bill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is they, and they also say this kind of replaces – because they, they currently have – you can actually get, I think, Internet through them, and they'll throw in HBO uh, Go just with Internet. <laughs> So there, Which there's, goes to show you how much money they're making off of off of internet. If they can afford to give you something that oh, they're desperate at this point. HBO's paying or charging them. I don't know. I'm going to make a guess at eight dollars a month or seven dollars a month mm-hmm. for. But also, how complicated is it to be a Comcast subscriber at this point when you're looking at all these services? Uh, because, and, and that's that's the tough part is yeah. that all the decisions and all the. Well, you can – and all the nickel and, nickel and diming, I, you can add this for, for, for just three more dollars a month. For five more dollars a month, you can do this. And for and for ten, you can bundle these two things. Ten if you want all that in HD, right? Yeah. 
So I, I think it's I think it's too overwhelming for the average consumer mm-hmm. to the point where it, where you have two types of consumers. You have okay, fine, just give me everything. I'm not dealing with it. Or you know what? Don't give me anything because I can't afford it. Right, exactly. And and they're trying to get everybody in that sweet spot. As long as they can get right. something from you. And it doesn't even include ESPN or anything, too. And, 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 and I, the one uh, core killers, I think, was talking about how even ESPN, uh, since they're, since nobody's nobody really cares too much about having ESPN because they can all pay for WWE Network, MLB TV, etc., uh, they're upping the prices of ESPN to make up so they don't lose money. Uh, so, way to go, Disney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, we talked about uh, Xbox Music last week. I see they're getting free streaming for tracks stored in OneDrive. So that's kind of the answer to the iTunes match and the uh, Google Drive upload scheme, isn't it? Yeah. I always wonder about these whole where free streaming for tracks stored. Like I'd be more interested in the tracks stored in OneDrive don't count against your OneDrive space. Mm-hmm. But, I, w- I would hope that if I stored a file on Dropbox, I would be allowed to stream it for free. You know what I mean? But 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 the whole point is Dropbox isn't a Dropbox isn't a music application. The whole point is it's and, there your music application Xbox Music, which is going to be like, what we say it was Groove or something last Groove. week. Um, that recognizes it. It makes sense. It's just like I throw. It's just like I throw uh, uh, all my footage into Google Drive, and all pops up in my Google Photos. It makes the most interesting stories with all my but, raw but, footage. But you're storing photos in, a, in, a, in an online file storage section. To me, you're storing. This is you're storing music, right? To an online file storage area. I, I, it, could you imagine that if they said? Could you imagine if Microsoft? And this is why I don't understand why this is news. Uh, if Microsoft said, you are not allowed to stream the music you store in your OneDrive. <laughs> <laughs> How silly would that be? Then but why it, would you put any music in but there? It, but again, it's, 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 it's not that you can't stream it, because if you open up like the OneDrive app, I'm sure you could like play the file over there. But they're saying, right. this shows up over here as well. Like It's a distinction of, we're pointing this, this information you have here in your drive to this other application that otherwise has no hooks whatsoever, right? But it's all it's all Microsoft on the back end. That's what That's I mean. True. It'd be more interesting if you said Xbox just gave you access to Google Drive and Dropbox and Box and every other thing, and allows you to stream music from those sections as well as OneDrive and your Xbox Music Pass. Mm-hmm. It's for I mean, to me this is this is silly. And maybe, maybe I'm not, I'm not I'm either not reading deep enough into it or. I'm just playing it off. I, I just don't be. understand I, I, why I, I, this. I, I think it was just a feature ad in general. Yeah. But listen, Chilla, I, I'm going to step you up to the one that's get, the story that's getting you excited. But first, I want to talk about another Amazon story, okay? Okay. Uh, and this this goes and this is this is your territory too. So apparently, according to uh, iMore.com, it looks like the Amazon Echo will now support Wink controlled smart home hardware. Have you turned your house into a voice activated everything yet? I, so I played around yeah. with this using a bunch of different plugins and craziness. Mm-hmm. Um, like a, I actually put a Bluetooth four uh, adapter on a on a PC that I centered in the house, so you could get connectivity to that Bluetooth. And I had a nice headset, but you run into that problem, right? You have to have a headset everywhere. Um, Echo definitely solves that problem. Um, I would personally want echoes in at least one two three four <laughs> five rooms wow um, to make sure that if i'm going to tell something to do something um that i expect you want to, you to want occur. star trek a little one around with you that that's so that's not enough and that's not i don't know yeah no. <laughs> I, like, and that's that's what i mean store we've talked about this before too right is how do you how do you even wire and run in in room microphones to every room and then split it back into a PC and then have the audio split back out. I mean this, mm-hmm. this so the Echo solves all of those problems. Yeah. So the the yeah. great thing about the Echo too is they continue to expand their their reach for now the Wink Hub. Um, they had Belkin and Wemo and, and Philips with Hue. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're definitely gonna push 
Apple with a run for their money. Um, I'll be interested to see how this race works out and will people start to have, will you have an Echo, Amazon Echo in this room and a Apple TV in another room that, 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 that grabs your well, home automation and then you're going to have Siri and, and at what point? At what point? Speak with. At what point do you just say, hey Siri, make sure to tell my Amazon Echo to do this? Well, but I don't think I, I don't think that's that's, that's my point, right? Mm-hmm. Is that you're not? That's not how it's going to work. You're going to say, "Hey Siri, um, I'll be home in five minutes. Set up the house for my arrival." Yeah, and Siri's going to set up the house for your arrival, <laughs> <laughs> and then you're going to get home, which, which includes gonna, which, which includes no no no. What you're going to do is you're going to create a Rube Goldberg machine that turns into like some voice recorder that's going to say. Hey, uh, hey Alexa! I'm I'm just gonna blow up everybody. Hey, hey, but hey no, Xbox! Because, you're, so, no, 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 so no, because it, Siri's gonna have the ties in to the Wemo and the Hue oh, and, okay. the, and so, the Lutron. So you're basically the trick is is that when you get home and your phone's in your pocket, Siri's no longer listening, right? Because she's not plugged into anything, and you don't want to have to reach into your pocket to hold down the button and pull out your phone. So uh, so Alexa's gonna be sitting on the kitchen counter, and you're gonna say. Alexa, remind me to get milk, and it's time for bed. And then Alexa is going to get your set your reminder for milk the next time you're at the store, and it's going to flip flop all your lights and light a path to your bedroom, which then in in and it knows what lights are already on and off, right? Mm-hmm. Because the back end is what controls and sends the signal of what's currently on or off. Then when you get in bed and you dock your phone next to your bed, you're going to say. You know what, Siri, and say we've, Siri. We've, I'm, we've I'm already in bed. said. It's, we've it's already said everything. Shut it down, and all, everything's going to shut off. And then she's going to play you a lullaby. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, I think, I think, I think you're going to see what you're going to start to see is there's going to be no one front runner and no winner in this race. Mm-hmm. Everybody is going to end up working. I honestly think everybody's going to end up working together. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you if you want Alexa to read one of your your books to you, that can happen. If you want Siri to turn on something or turn off something or remind you of something as well, I think these are all going to work in tandem, and it's going to be based on what you're physically doing, where you're physically at, and what devices you have around you, and what's physically plugged in at any given time. So you create this like much we like we've been talking about this kind of uh, personal cloud that happens with uh, wearable devices and Fitbits and such. You're going to create this other like audible cloud around you as well. It's like kind of like I always think about when you have Wi-Fi or I have multiple Wi-Fi's in this house. Like this, I, I visualize this bubble of connectivity that I have around and outside my house. So you're going to have this bubble of of audible connectivity that you're going to have in these hot spots in your house, at least until you get that pervasive Star Trek experience that I know you're looking for. I'm wondering if a sliding door was included in the <laughs> office upgrade over there. Uh, maybe a captain's chair. But anyways, uh, you know, I, that's, that, that is the next step for this. And, uh, and I think the key, the key to this whole thing, too, is a secure connection back to your house. You know, isn't it so amazing? Uh, you know, we're, we're on Back to the Future two year here in 2015 i think the date is officially coming up in october if i'm not mistaken that was november no it was is it november uh, but but you think about oh, that's november that 5th 1955 what's the 2015 date i, I think remember. i think it's the same thing but but it's um you know we really did get to that point didn't we there is the voice activated thing there's just no fax machines um i mean th- you know th- this this is your fax machine this iphone is your fax machine at that point that's the only thing they didn't get right out of that thing October 21st uh, uh, they, they, they got 3D happened they, uh, the Cubs was wrong uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Jaws is playing at the theater down the road so that was accurate uh, so is the anniversary but, it, 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 but the, the point I was making about the secured connection back to your house when you think about this right the, the Amazon Echo sitting on your on your countertop that's speaking to the Wink device it's probably not communicating directly to that device. Mm-hmm. Alexa's understanding something on the Amazon backend on some cloud-hosted server. It's then sending a signal maybe to 
Belkin or to Phillips to then interpret that signal to then send it down to that device. Um, it's not like the, the echo reaches over and taps the button on the Wemo to make it turn on or off. Um, <laughs> So you're going to have to have internet connectivity, and where I think this really comes into play is when you're not when you're not home, mm -hmm. um, and that kind of and that's one of the big things that that if you read if you read deep into the the understanding of why Apple is making people that have some of these devices already replace them mm -hmm. is because they had to be end to end encrypted. Um, and a lot of the companies that put out early early devices, the devices weren't end-to-end -end encrypted. So you could sniff out the information and, and start flipping people's lights on and off, um, as well as figure out user IDs, passwords, and everything else that then could potentially lead to other devices that were encrypted. Um, so that's where I think, I, I think this is going, but I think everyone's going to have to play together. Mm -hmm. And if anyone's shown that it's it's Amazon and and Apple because they're it's all about them tying into everybody else's devices. Alex in the chat is saying he doesn't want a smart home; he wants a wise home. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's talk about the Amazon story you've all been waiting for. I saw a commercial last night during Monday Night Raw for this. I don't know; are there usual Amazon commercials out there, or is, is there was this... the one though, there was the one with the oh, drones shoot. and the people dancing? And... Oh, that, that was yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and definitely more, more prominent during holiday season. And I know. Uh, but, but this time of year, no. Right, right. And I know, I know, Katie, you said you've been getting physical mail lately. Uh, we were talking <laughs> about the other day from Amazon. So. Yes, I get physical mail from Amazon because I don't take advantage of their streaming services. So, apparently, they, think they, apparently they, they know just, about me. They, they assume you don't have internet? Is that what this thing? <laughs> it's amazing. I, I was like, I got a letter from Amazon, and it's like, hey, did you know the same thing they've been sending me in emails for months and months yes. on end that I just go on? Well, that hasn't yes. worked. We need you to. We really need you to watch uh, uh, Alpha Alpha House and uh, what's the other show they have on? <laughs> I want to say Betas, but that was already canceled. Uh, Man on High, High Castle. That's what you got to do. You know, watch some Man on High Castle, and they'll they'll stop killing trees for you. But anyways, watch our original programming, or else. Please, please. Damn, I, I, this is a sidebar on that, but I, I was watching the preview for Man on High Castle and realizing how much I just like the stuff that's coming off of, like, the online services at this point, right? Like, like between Netflix, Amazon, and even, like, Hulu Originals, like, you really could be satisfied in your TV watching, like, just for exclusive content uh, uh, pretty well. So, throw in an HBO and you're just, you just, there, there's nothing else you need um, in most cases. So, anyways... Tomorrow's Prime Day. You might be listening to this on Prime Day. You might have already spent uh, way over your budget on Prime Day. Uh, so, as I'm sure many of us here will. Uh, and, and, and there's been some competitors stepping up. And I know, you know discussing with you guys uh, online and off, uh, yeah, this is going to be Christmas in or Black Friday in July from now on. They just mm -hmm. lit the torch on this thing. Um, I, I know, Sheila, you, I know you were been very, very excited about this going into it. Uh, what, what have you seen and have you heard any rumors? Has there been a leak of what we're going to see tomorrow? I haven't seen a leak of what we're going to see. Um, it'll be in, uh, like, I, I don't even, I can't even imagine how this is going to play out. And then to, to your point, like the, the different competitors, um, I think this is again, the competitors falling short and doing the me too. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, already you you have a lot of different companies. You know, will will now match internet prices. Um, I, I heard on one podcast. I think it might have been MacBreak Weekly. It was somebody who was talking about how the price differential from um, Staples to Staples Online mm -hmm. is so far off that you can price match with their online store. And I'm like. Really, I have to go into a store and look up what they're selling their own stuff for because it's that far off online. Also, they um, they will take Amazon orders too, uh, prices too. Yeah. Okay, so. so but I mean, when you look at these things again, like I said, it, this to me is another me too. Um, do something original. Give me give me something different. Um, but I, I'm interested to see how. Amazon's drummed up a lot of interest on this. It, it, it's going to 
what what exactly are they going to do? I, and I, I have no clue. Are, are we all Prime members? Mm-hmm. I am. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious if any if we know because uh, you mean you mean there's people out there that aren't Prime members? Well, yeah, but I'm, clearly part of this push is to get people to sign up to do this, right? And because right. They, they started talking about this, uh, I saw stuff a couple weeks ago, and the idea is you still have time to be a Prime member for this day. Mm-hmm. Well, and the kicker was too. I think it's sort of maybe you mentioned it. Mm-hmm. Um, you can sign up for the free trial. Mm-hmm. You, you still have time to sign up for Prime for free and use this and then cancel it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Not that they, not yeah. That I ever would. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Prime. I'm a total sucker. <laughs> well, what? I had showed you guys last week that Target had done midweek and done a Black Friday sale. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's is this is this a thing now? Is this is this something we do in July now? Mm-hmm. Or is just every day going to become every day is going to become Black Friday? But do you think now it's like in November and December, you know, with Black Friday and Christmas time, it's like for gifts for everyone else, and now you're like, oh, wait a minute, I have disposable income for me right now. Well, there's let's let's much- let's be honest. I think there's a lot of people taking advantage of Black Friday sales for themselves. Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. like, I mean, let's yeah. be let's be honest. There there is the the gift. Mm-hmm. It's under the veil of gift giving, but oh man, that Xbox is a hundred bucks off. I'm going to pick that thing up. You know what I mean? Like like I think, uh, and now you have no excuse, and you will just purchase for yourself. And I mean, this is the the physical. Uh, I've been suffering through this uh, recently with Steam sales. You know, over the years and years, right? Because they'll just I mean, they're digital, so they can just bottom out all their prices, and it doesn't matter. You know, I'm like, I have 150 games on my Steam collection that I barely touch, uh, but and most of them I paid probably on average five dollars for. And we're talking like full on like the Batman games and Tomb Raider and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, so I mean, I think this is just them stepping up to this uh, you know you gotta think they that that end of the year push for black friday and everything is what percentage of most retail and if amazon that already is cutting it to the bone as far as uh as far as profits go if they can get another spike right in the middle of the year that'd be tremendous and 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 maybe maybe it helps other companies too if they get to do this too but you know, I, I don't know. It depends on how they do it. You know, that process is going to be interesting because that's usually this is a loss leader process, right? That gets you in there. Well, you have to think it's it, when you're there. This is like a little test for Amazon and, and these other retailers because you have to when you're in retail, you have to weigh. Okay, people have X amount of dollars for Christmas time. They have no money after the first of the year because they've spent X amount on Christmas time. And then it's like, at what point are they spending money on vacations? What point are they making all these major purchases? Right. And you're just guessing at what time people have the most disposable income. And that's when we'll get a consistent black mid Black Friday, whatever. See, that I, is. I would think that people have the most most disposable income after income tax return. Yeah, yeah. But you have that's to usually that's usually when companies that's when companies usually release their their um, any kind of bonuses as well as. Yeah, obviously, the the income tax return. I, I would think that early spring time would be a better time than now. I think I think I like the earlier idea of it's it's polar opposite from Christmas and the, the Christmas in July thing is not unheard of though. I mean, it's it's not right. it's not a huge deal, but it's something that that, that we're already sort of trained to, to to at least notice. You know, mm-hmm. um, and and if Amazon can can. Uh, uh, take advantage of that and take advantage of, of, of our conditioning. Um, that's, uh, that, that makes the timing for this work out. Okay. Holy crap. It, I, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Katie. And I got something here. Oh, okay. Um, and the other, well, the other thing is, is if you do it in spring, you're already competing with the, uh, uh, post Super Bowl sales, the NCAA, all these like mega sales that everybody's having. There's no a July 4th sale. There's no major retail sale holiday in summer months. Mm-hmm. Besides for furniture, and so, you know, sometimes you'll see it in electronics, but it's only at the beginning of the year there are all these massive sales all right, for I, uh, to get people in. Remember, remember, there used to be like that tax-free day on computer hardware. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But I mean, this is all. But this is also all about their their anniversary, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like yeah. we're we're not guaranteed. There's Ostensibly, be, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're they're claiming that there there may be only one of these. Right, right. But everybody's reacting. But I wonder if uh, still, now that they've seen that in July, does that mean 
it'll be back. Uh, so uh, we had a link in the chat room shared with us by uh, uh, Alex out there in Cali. Uh, he's already uh, uh, setting up to to buy all the things out there. Uh, but this is in Time Money. Uh, so we're looking at Kindle's $30 off, Fire HD 7, $60 off, which means it's going to be like an $80 tablet. Yikes. 32-inch um, LED TV, $75. 40-inch uh, uh, 1080p LED TV is $115. Uh, not, not bad, but... Ooh, Transformers Rescue Bots Optimus Prime figure, $9.99. What's up? Uh, let's see. Lightning deals on DVDs up to 75% off. 50% off any Harry Potter books. 30% off uh, jewelry and such. And they keep bringing up baby wipes. 60% of Amazon Elements baby wipes with a code. Uh, I, I wonder what the presentation is going to be like for this. It's just going to be a giant page of, look at all this stuff. You know, uh, where, where, are you, where are you seeing the TV thing? I need a TV. You need a TV. <laughs> it's no, a, I need a TV. You don't need a TV. <laughs> well, I need another TV. <laughs> I could use I could use a TV. Um, but anyways, yeah. How's that VCR working out over there, uh, daughters? The VCR. Yes. I haven't hooked it up yet. <laughs> uh, there's. I'm pathetic. <laughs> that links in there for maybe, you guys. Maybe Amazon those. will have like an iPhone recording video stand. There you yeah, go. Yeah. There you go. Maybe, Maybe something like that. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so we'll, we'll uh, report it back next week with all the things that we bought that we probably shouldn't have. I'm sure. <laughs> so well, uh, I mean, there's things. There's things I've held off on buying, mm -hmm. knowing this day is coming. <sighs> Even on your calendar, You're, you have that days axed off with the circle on the fifteenth. I know it. I know it. Um, you watch. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and forget all about it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Some like, of this. You're, you're going to bed? What's wrong with you? <laughs> well, does it – because yeah, there's, their, there's their, deal, their deal of the day starts at 9 p.m. So does that mean – 9 p.m.? What, what? I'm seeing the stuff starts at like midnight Pacific time. Uh, oh, that's crap. <laughs> right, but usually if you look at their deal, their so we get to deal before. of the day mm – Mm-hmm. Those usually start at 9 p.m. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, well, we'll we'll see how this goes. We'll we'll see. We'll, we'll have to have a live tweet of what's going on. Oh, and gee, this is look at this. Um. Anyways, so uh, Dutters, uh, let's get the social media rundown. I have nothing. I didn't. There's nothing oh oh, on. this is just stuff that bled <laughs> over. Okay. Well, no. The only thing that's exciting going on is now presidential candidates are all like, "Let's go do Snapchat." <laughs> Which is going to work out really oh, well. Oh no! Oh no! One, That's one of one of the things that I that I do in my my day job is um uh, post a links post for with political stuff, mm -hmm. and I, I have a feeling I've I've gotten a lot of mileage out of out of uh, presidential candidates and social media so far, and and I think that's only going to get even better as we continue into twenty sixteen. I just just give up. Just just don't just no, don't. don't. You're just give up. No, no no don't give up. <laughs> Especially, <laughs> especially you, Mr. Trump. Please don't give up. Oh, I see. So you, uh, you're, you're doing the uh, John Stewart style hand wringing uh, when it, it comes to a little to... bit of that. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. You're like, oh, this is juicy. We can sink our teeth in there. This thing. <laughs> yeah. You know what? He needs to show up at WrestleMania again next year and have another hair versus hair match, right? So much awesome. I mean. Be. He's uh, only probably the first official uh, uh, presidential candidate that's been at a WrestleMania because uh, Je until Jesse Ventura uh, gets there. So, uh, anyways, mm. but I don't know about the stuff he's doing lately. <laughs> it's getting weird. It's getting a little now I'm weird. just googling Ron Paul and WrestleMania. <laughs> Uh, so hey, we, we, a lot of people were checking out our story. I, I noticed on the YouTubes. I know you sent you guys some of the numbers today uh, about the proxy ham. Did Wait, you, did you see my update to that? Uh, the, the, the one in here? Yeah, uh, well, I heard about it, too. Uh, so it's, comp it's gone. It's, it's, it got, um, it got, it got disappeared by the government, it sounds like. Well, and that's what, you, you can't, like, I can't figure out, and no one's really coming forward with a lot of information as to, yes, to your point, where, where it disappeared off to. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They're, they're saying that it wouldn't, it, it would not have interfered with FCC regulation, and it would not have interfered with patent law. Mm -hmm. um, 
one person came up with a far-fetched theory that they got a national security letter, and mm-hmm. then someone else fired back and said, so, no, that's probably so, so, not so, what so happened. The talk got canceled at DEF CON. Is it all, all traces online have disappeared from this? That's, that's what it sounds like. And, I mean, uh, early on, I mean, there was, there was an AMA asked me anything on Reddit about it. Mm-hmm. He was talking about he was going to release. And, and, and this isn't like something that, that's tough to build, right? It sounded like he had some code that he wrote and you fire up a Raspberry Pi and you get a little a couple antennas and you're good to go. Um, that being said, I'm wondering, did someone buy this? I'm wondering. I'm wondering if they, someone went. In. But I can't imagine because since it was going to be at that's, Con, that, that, that possibility makes a lot more sense than anything that might be sort of conspiracy theorish. Because mm-hmm. because when you think about the technology that went into this, and then you think about like the 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 bands that we talked about earlier for girls, mm-hmm. um, you could technically take that that band and now make it go two miles nice. and you could create you could create you could you could canvas the entire country relatively easy in internet or, or in an in a, in a network mm-hmm. so the, the, the i mean there, there were a lot of talk of nefarious and then bad type of things that you could do with this but the good or the connect, I mean, the, the connectivity that could come as a result of this is, is ridiculous. Um, so so I, I could see someone buying this. I just don't know if, they, if, if his plan was to release the plans on how to build it for free and sell the device for $200, what, it didn't seem like he was in it for the money. So why all of a sudden did he did he sell it to someone? I Listen, don't they know. took they took the plans, they took this box, they stuck it in a black van. It is gone. It is why right. is it is it's gone. Uh, so it'll be interesting. I don't know if we if we hear a peep, probably not considering. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it is an interesting thing that happened, but uh, also interesting. Hey, you know, I think it's time to install Flash. It sounds like. Uh, there was a, but which remind me, I'm logging into the main, the studio computer upstairs and I'm uninstalling flash from the last, uh, Mac that should have it. I think in the, in the, in the, uh, I, I never installed it on my uh, laptop. I installed it at, uh, my one day job yesterday and, uh, and, uh, yeah, it, it, it's done. It's done. Yeah. I have it like on one browser on one machine mm-hmm. if, if I really need to use it. So basically, uh, the, uh, there the was meltdown was pretty much today, right? Because I, I I noticed at work today, it just sort of. Uh, well, so I so I think uh, what occurred was there were the someone found two zero day exploits that were were published. Yeah. Um. So everyone was like, "Let's kill it! Let's kill it!" Um, since then, obviously, Adobe has patched those. Um, I heard that originally Firefox. Um, released an update that blocked flash, flash by default. Supposedly, now that, that the they have updated the player, um, they will let it play on on demand. Um, I, Facebook security yesterday reached out to Adobe and said, "You need to give an end of life date." Yeah, for, I, I, for Flash. I, I'm just um, don't mind me. I'm just quietly showing the Occupy Flash website as you're talking. Um, manifesto, <laughs> the Flash player is dead. Uh, let's all install, uninstall it, and and I'm taking care of that in the last of the computers. And I mean, it, it, the kicker was like Android was big on look, we have Flash, and nobody else does. And, and then they quickly realized, hey, it's sucking all the battery life out of our no, devices. We no longer support it. I have Flash um, on this computer. I need to the, take care of that. I think the companies that have the largest issue with this are your. Um, companies that wrote tutorials and training, online training, and, and built it and never planned on updating it to something like HTML5. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you, those are the companies, a lot of the companies that are holding holding on to Flash because it was the, the tweening and the stuff of, of how it worked. And right, right. You know, I, 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 hey, I was just, I was just teaching it. Flash animation like not a year and a half ago. Uh, now, and it was mostly in the Flash program and just a little snippet of 
uh, starting with HTML5 animation, right? Right. And, and I'm not even sure if those tools are really mature just yet. Last I knew... You've, you've, that- you've Tumult. Tumult makes a really nice um, HTML5 editor that does like kind of like the tweening and, and stuff like that. Okay. Um, there, there's, there's a couple that are out there that have really started to embrace... Or to, to build a UI that's that somewhat looks like um, – Tumult makes Hype 3. They okay, make I Hype. Um, but it, it, it embraces that theory and that look of, of a lot of the older school Flash. And if you remember Director, um, I was a huge mm-hmm. fan of Director. Which, I wouldn't, which I wouldn't of call myself flash. a fan. I was just subjected to three quarters of it. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's ingrained, unfortunately. So – yeah uh tumult.com yeah check that out um so all right on that note uh we need to get out here make sure you guys un- uninstall your flash uh so much going on around here please check out the sorgatron.com uh, creators newsletter we got some social media talks happening there um on, on the on the blog on, on that newsletter and of course basic sorgonomics uh, a lot of conversation including so how is social media used at the wwe live event this weekend uh i was pretty impressed by uh that how they got the crowd into that and uh and and so much more podcast pittsburgh is coming up august 15th at the uh Point Park University. Check out podcamppittsburgh.com. The schedule is forming as we speak. And I see, I see you, Crappy. I'm getting to you. Uh, but uh, And also, chachiplays.com. We got some great videos. If you go check out the Twitter, uh, the Facebook, we got some great videos coming out that we did with you. Jag off our friend John Chamberlain uh, to promote that. Uh, please uh, support that. It's for a great cause. Father Ryan's Art Center as well as Tunesium. Um, uh, arts programs for the underprivileged youth. And youths. Underprivileged youths. youths. And, the two uh, youths. Yes. Uh, so please go check all that out. Uncle Crappy, thank you for joining us again. Dear me over at the Post Gazette website. Um, yeah, please go check that out. Um, you, can, you can find me in beer centric bars, uh, including maybe tomorrow night at uh, the Carson Street Deli, the thing with the Labor Brewing Theory. Um, so please check out the show. Uh, you can, I occasionally write stuff at UncleCrappy.com, occasionally, meaning like once a month. Mm-hmm. So. So you can find me there too. At least you're consistent. And to uh, and to the corner to block is uh, Katie uh, Dutters. Uh, Katie Dutters on the Twitter. X. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I made the whole screen. Burp. Bink. Um. So, <laughs> wait, you got to do that in this shot here. There you go. Oh, wait, tell me. Ready? There you go. Good. We all can. Um. I, anything I going on uh, for people to check out that you're into? <laughs> I, don't, I'm not, I don't even know. <laughs> Just follow me on the Twitters. Things will be happening. There you go. I'll direct you from there. John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. You can find me at John Chichilla on the Facebooks and at the LinkedIn's too. I swear I'm going to log into LinkedIn. And, and I, I think I have 187 pending friend requests or, or <laughs> what LinkedIn requests. What are we looking at over there, Dutters? Is that, were we supposed to show <laughs> that? What's, what's happening? The cat. Right, and we got cat. a cat cam going on. Cat. Thank you, everybody. My bag. Cat, cat butt? Any, any cat butt? Oh. No, <laughs> cat butt. Cat butt. Sorgatron at... She's giving me the worst look. <laughs> Sorgatron on the Twitters. Awesomecast.net. Please subscribe, follow, and please uh, become our Patreon. Patreon on patreon.com. Awesome ca- slash awesomecast. Uh, we'll be doing a state of the uh, awesomecast uh, once a month, as well as some other kind of inside info and special stuff we're going to uh, figure out and get some stuff out there. Now we got somebody Patreoning. We'll, we'll have some content for you here coming up very very soon so thank you everybody to, for joining us thank you to our awesome chat room rocking us and giving some info all night long these have been my awesome guests and co-hosts Wahoo! you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.